This is Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. This guy, Lionel Messi, is the greatest dribbler of all time in football history. This guy, Cristiano Ronaldo, he is the greatest football scorer in the history. Both of them have a growth mindset, but I want to speak about Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo started at Manchester United in the UK, then went to Real Madrid, UV, and then went back to Manchester United as the greatest footballer of all time. In that time, he got every single trophy you could think about in football. Cristiano Ronaldo has a growth mindset, just like Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Tom Brady. In this video, I'll be speaking about growth mindset versus fixed mindset and what are the benefits of those and when you're supposed to, to use growth mindset and fixed mindset. Growth mindset, mainly, growth mindset mainly has four phases, patience and this is overall because you need patience to grow as a person and to grow a skill understanding you have to understand how to use the skill when to use it and how is it going to be beneficial to you practice the skill so you are confident that you are you can use that skill and finally improve your skill and this is why my growth mindset is very important when you're trying new things or trying to learn new things however fix mindset is different because fixed mindset you already know the skill you already confident on it you just need to perform at it you know and fixed mindset people usually focus on results and not the journey itself if you have a fixed mindset is more likely you have an experience in an area and you have responsibilities that you have to abide to like having a family or going to work or responsibilities to your friends growth mindset is to grow as a person in regards in all areas of your life you must have a growth mindset you need to be able to recreate yourself especially in your 20s when you are still learning about the world Why should I study the lecture before taking it in class? After all, that is the chronological order of studying. You go to lecture, you take the lecture in class, then you go to the library and you study the lecture in the post-studying phase. Pre-reading promote focusing in class during lecture and also promotes spaced repetition. What you should be doing during pre-study on the light. Then after that, I start studying. Simple as that for me. Understanding the purpose of pre-reading is very important. To learn something and over a period of time, to learn it dramatically. Active recall and spaced repetition are one of the most important or efficient ways of studying and they both require you to learn information dramatically over a period of time. It also increases your capacity to understand material, so when your mind encounters a new detail in class, your mind knows what to do with it, where it goes, your mind knows. Also, the most important thing about reading before class or before taking the lecture is understanding the key ideas of the lecture. This is very, very important. The four P's. How do you use pre-studying to help you focus in class as well as retain information? after class so the first thing you want to do when you're pre-studying is previewing the material which means you're looking for the important ideas or the key ideas in the lecture look for bold words bold sentences pictures that are repeated or sentences that are even secondly what you need to 
to do is to predict and why predicting to predict if you understand something or not or if you don't understand it or not because if you predict you understand a concept and then when you go to lecture the professor or the lecturer speaks about a completely different point it could mean that you don't understand that point or you're under the illusion of understanding that point which means that if your predictions are right then you understand the topic mostly and if your predictions are wrong then there are areas that you are weak in that you need to work on to understand that topic and that is very helpful for your pre-studying prior knowledge and prior knowledge is very very important during your pre-studying having background information to fall onto when you're pre-studying or during the lecture is very very important because it gives you a big picture of what is really going on and if you understand the big picture of what is really going on you must ask yourself that why is the professor giving me that why is that going to be very helpful for me in the future Generating question is a very important skill for promoting spaced repetition. So I would highly recommend that you do that if you have the time during pre-reading. Thank you for watching. You ever will wake up and be like, man, I wish I can have a day off because I get that feeling often with that YouTube channel. Procrastination is not avoiding or delaying tasks. It also includes an aspect that is counterproductive, irrational, or unnecessary. According to Alexander Rosenthal, a procrastination researcher and a clinical psychologist at Karolinska Institution in Sweden, people who procrastinate, they do it because they expect that the value that they're gonna achieve from a certain task is far too low from the value they're putting in or in other words from the time they're investing into their project. Having a problem with procrastination is having a problem with the amount. If you really want to stop procrastinating, follow the next steps to cure procrastination. Identify the problem. Why do you procrastinate? Is it a time issue? Is it a task issue? Or is it a failure issue? Have a to-do list. Having a schedule is so effective to the productivity of your day. It also helps with procrastination because you literally know what you need to do on a given day and that's very good to eliminate time wasting. If you know that you have a few tasks to do and you're gonna be done with work for the rest of the day or done studying for the rest of the day, you will be motivated to do the work. And at the end of the day, you will be ha happy about the amount of And at the end of the day, you will be happy about the progress you made on a certain goal. If you wanna know more about having a to-do list or scheduling your time or having a schedule in your life watch my video on how to have a night routine always remember at the back of your mind small steps over time lead to big steps don't forget at the end of the day to reward yourself doing sports hanging out with your friends anything to get you out of the work mindset If it's a task issue, I highly suggest that you divide it into multiple steps to gain work efficacy over time and that's if you are overwhelmed or feel anxious about how big a task is. How I beat procrastination? Well, I usually reward myself at the end of the day by playing football. I really love playing football and I enjoy the game very much. I also go out with friends and even play video games at the end of the day because at the end of the day is the time for me to relax. So I never study at the end of the day or at night to be specific. What about you? Which strategy works best for you?
Putin has made his decision to invade Ukraine in the coming days. When pressed, you believe the decision has been made to invade? Even more realistic in the past few hours, following a televised address... Why do you post lecture study? To find weaknesses and to improve your knowledge on a topic. Do not use time consuming strategies to post lecture review. Post lecture review is meant to find your weaknesses toward studying for an exam. In a study made by the American Journal of Pharmaceutical Education, a study made by Adam Persky and Young Cho Shannon Plammer, a comparison between rewatching class recording versus retrieval practice as post lecture learning strategies. The study showed that there were no difference in performance after a week. However, students who studied the recorded lecture scored better on the exams than students who retrieved information through practice testing. And this shows that there is a pattern of students who retrieve information through practice distance are more efficient than students who study the lectures through recording. It shows that there was long-term retention of knowledge using that knowledge and students who go to classes on a daily basis should practice test because it is more efficient in the long-term performance. Efficiency improves your productivity and increases your production output. How to post lecture review one of the best ways to best lecture review is the use of question banks. If you can look for question banks on a certain topic online, however, if you cannot find question banks on a certain topic, what I would highly recommend is the use of Quizlet and the use of Anki. These are the best tools available today to find question banks. When to post lecture review studying at night is convenient the material you have to study is fresh in your mind in the morning it is inconvenient however it is better for long-term information retention The best advice I would give for getting an ace on your exam is that you could do everything right from the beginning of the day until the end of the day. But when you study, if you don't test yourself hard, then you'll never ace the exam. Always aim to test yourself harder than the exam you're taking. In this video, I will be speaking about a certain type of burnout as called academic burnout. Academic burnout is a very stressful thing to deal with, specifically when you are mid-school. However, to truly deal with academic preventing versus avoiding. To prevent is to stop something from happening. To avoid is to make sure something does not happen. Of course, you cannot avoid anything forever and that is why preventing is very important. Identifying burnout it is very important to learn how to identify burnout in its early stages. Symptoms of academic burnout Burning out is the feeling of not wanting to do work, feeling exhausted, lack of motivation, lack of inspiration and creativity, and loss of confidence. If you happen to identify any of these signs and symptoms, you should start implementing one or more of these activities in your life. Starting with making time for enjoyable activities. Not just the weekend, sprinkle all over your calendar things that you like to do. Exercise every day. Try to exercise at least three times a week. Stay hydrated. Eat healthy, keep
keep your body active and all this will lead into you living and leading a healthy life go outside often run hang out with friends play football do activities that you like to do on a daily basis not just on the weekend how to recover from burnout Recovering from burnout is very very important. It's very important because you might have a deadline coming or you might have an exam coming or you have a job coming, whatever reason it is, you have to be able to know how to recover from burnout. To recover from burnout, you need to make important changes in your life. You need to be practicing mindful breathing, eat, socialize, try meditating on a daily basis and rearrange your schedule so it would make it easier for you do not ignore academic burnout you need to learn to manage your stress and you can do that by slowing down unplug relax going outside meditating breathing enjoying life keeping calm stay positive and take it easy at the end of the day how to avoid burnout create reasonable goals stick to deadline and avoid procrastination sleep seven to nine hours per night eat healthy and drink a lot of water make friends with school colleagues and so that school is fun take plenty of breaks throughout the day to enjoy yourself Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. If you like our videos, please like, subscribe, and share our videos. And if you don't like them, we promise you we'll put more effort into our videos in the distant future. Thank you. Pomodoro technique is one of the best ways to avoid procrastination. This way of studying is very effective and very efficient. If you want to build up good habits over time, you should use this way of studying. In this video, I'll be speaking about Pomodoro technique, why it is effective, and how you can use it. Watch the full video to find out why this technique is so effective. Hello friends, and welcome back to Success Jack. How to use Pomodoro technique. Go to the app store on your phone and search Pomodoro app. You will find multiple apps that will help you use Pomodoro Technique. My personal favorite is that one. Download and open the app and click on the timer. You can also customize the app to whatever timer you have. All you have to do is study for 25 minutes until you listen to this notification from your phone. And Fantastic job. You've completed focus session. Take a break. And then start again when you listen to that notification. The short on your break phone. is over. Get back to work. The Pomodoro Technique is a time management system that encourages people to work with the time they have, rather than against it. Using this method, you break your workday into 25 minute chunks separated by 10 minute breaks. These intervals are referred to as Pomodoros. After about 4 Pomodoros, you take a longer break of about 15 to 20 minutes and up to 30 minutes. The thought behind the method is that the clock imparts a need to keep moving, maybe then feeling like you have perpetual time in the workday to complete things after work. Wasting those valuable hours on interruption, you realize you just have 20 minutes to gain however much headway on an undertaking as could be expected. Also, these constrained breaks help you to fix that fatigued world feeling a large portion of us experience around the day's end. It's difficult to go through hours before your PC without acknowledging it. As that ticking clock reminds you to get up and chill out, what makes Pomodoro so successful? The subjective strangeness of utilizing a tomato as substitutes for units of time gives a false representation of Pomodoro technique. Not kidding, viability with regards to assisting individual with completing things. This is what makes this technique interestingly fit to boosting usefulness. Make it simple to simply begin. Wasting time and energy before you start on procrastination isn't good for your productivity. I recommend you just start with the hardest content as the, your first content and just simply begin your Pomodoros. 
The point is to avoid procrastination. I recommend you to do 10 sessions a day if you are studying for an exam. You give all your focus to your studies for the time that you set and you take a break at the end. You lie to your brain about the task being huge and you force yourself to do tasks within the 25 minutes allocated. The point of Pomodoro is to focus on a task to finish it in 25 minutes. Separate a huge workload or an assignment into chunks and, to and do them separately for 25 minutes. After that, take a 5 minute or a 10 minute break and keep working on your assignment or exam. Battling interruptions. In that event, you are being interrupted by family, kids or siblings. While this is technically not your fault, these interruptions that you face not, not only take time off your day but they also take time off the objectives you want to achieve. I recommend you lock your room whenever you're seriously busy with some work. The Pomodoro technique assists you with opposing self-interferences and retrain your mind to center. Each Pomodoro is devoted to one errand and each break is an opportunity to reset and take your consideration back to what you ought to be chipping away at. Make a Pomodoro to-do list. At the start of each day or the night before, review all your active projects and your schedule. Everything you want to accomplish today or tomorrow Estimate how many Pomodoro each will take and add tomato emojis at the end of the task name to indicate your Pomodoro as Towards the beginning of every day, audit all your dynamic activities and your assignments and your timetable. All that you need to achieve all the activities of the day. The Pomodoro technique is very effective to avoid procrastination, not giving up high intensity studying, reducing distraction and maintain good energy levels. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment down below. Get in touch with us on our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Links are in the description down below. Thank you for watching. So I was wondering, why are flashcards so effective? I mean, why does every single top student or any person who knows how to study recommends that if you are memorizing, you should use flashcards? So I decided to make a video about it. I'm going to investigate why flashcards are one of the most amazing techniques to use for study. Believe me, what I found on why flashcards are so effective is going to change the way you study forever. Watch until the end. So, as any well-respected human being would do, I went to Google and I found out a huge amount of information on why flashcards are so effective. After days researching this topic, I finally found why flashcards are actually so effective. Advantages of flashcards Flashcards are cost-effective. Yes, plain and simple cards are more than enough to use for flashcards. Two, they are portable. Flashcards are portable learning material that can be carried anywhere, anytime with sheer ease and comfort. They are also less bulky in comparison to that textbook that you use and you don't have enough space to access it anywhere or anytime. Flashcards speed things up. Number 3. Flashcards can really give you learning a whole new dimension by speeding things up for your own good. Flashcards help teach you how to memorize and the more you use flashcards, yeah, the more you do become a better at memorizing. Flashcards improve your memory like a car moving on a speed pump at the beginning, it's slow, but then after you go past it, it starts gaining speed. So weeks in utilizing flashcards in your study, you will find that you are becoming much more efficient at memorizing. They offer various study methods. Since you can shuffle the order of your flashcards, it prevents students from simply memorizing the order of the answers and long list items. Reverse the flashcards so the answers can be seen first and students must summarize what the original questions were. Finally, the game breaker. Why are flashcards so effective? Flashcards enhance and improves active recall. Now this is a game changer. If you don't know what is active recall, I highly suggest that you go and watch that video. You'll find the link of the video right now and you'll find it in the description. How to use flashcards. Find the link to Quizlet in my description. Go to Quizlet, for example, today I want to do my studies on amino acids. I go to flashcard section and then I start going through my flashcards card by card. If you can get to draw the amino acid in a paper in front of you or you can try to imagine it. 
There are also other things you, you can do like switching answers and instead of you going for names You can go through the pictures and figure out what's the name of the amino acid Or you can simply just press play and go along with the system that Quizlet provides How to make your own flashcards Ask yourself questions that might come on the exam. Use lectures, books, repeated notes from your classroom and your flashcards. You can also search whatever it is you want to study on Quizlet and you're gonna probably find the deck of flashcards on it. Try to figure out which cards associate with each other. That way when you are studying one card, you are able to remember multiple cards as well. Make a mind map with the cards. Clarify every one of the association you see between singular and between related cards. A connective methodology is to utilize what you learn in real sense and associate it with cards together. Use cheat sheets in gathering information. Get along with friends from class during an arranged study meeting and test each other using the flashcards. You can even handle the cheat sheets and make measures collectively. Talk about which ideas you are believe are cheat sheet potential and why. Thank you.